On behalf of my colleagues, I'll present our design process in developing a research prototype to explore the potential of gradually transitioning people in and out of virtual reality to better support profound emotional experiences. Experiencing nature can make us feel connected to Earth and support our well being. However, access to these experiences for many is dwindling. Virtual reality could be one way to provide better access because of its immersive and highly customizable properties. However, attempts to use VR for this purpose have been not entirely successful, and this might be because of the sterile and unwelcoming conditions surrounding the virtual experience. In the field of psychedelics, the phrase set and setting is used to describe the importance of the participant's mindset in physical setting when having a trip. Psychedelic therapists will make sure participants are in a comfortable environment where they can safely surrender to the experience. In a digital context, set and setting has been used in theme parks such as Disney World. Researchers have also identified the importance of transitions and continuity between physical and digital work. We extend previous work by looking at how can gradual transitions in and out of VR support the intended experience and what design features are important in creating mindset and setting of a virtual experience. To investigate these questions, we conducted our study in three main phases. First, we developed a research prototype, followed by a design refinement process, and finally, a case study. We used a virtual awe-inspiring wellness environment, or awe, that was inspired by the OV effect, the profound emotional experience astronauts have when they see Earth from space, and are overcome with a sense of awe, wonder, oneness with the planet, and compassion for the environment. As you can see, the awe experience consisted of four stages involving a tent, a campsite, a forest, lake space, the earth, and finally arriving back in the tent. We used the HTC Vive headset, noise canceling headphones, and a swivel chair so the participants could move by leaning in the direction of the tent. So, first, we designed our research prototype around the awe experience. We grounded our design elements in three design pillars, a game design concept that defines three to five elements or emotions that the experience is trying to explore or make people feel. Specifically, a group of awe experts brainstormed ideas related to our overall goal of supporting awe and mental well-being in VR. Our first pillar was childlike wonder. Our second pillar, perceived agency. Our third pillar was self-transcendence. Once we had our three design pillars, we generated a bunch of design elements. We categorized the elements into five transition types based on participants' perceptual shift from one space to the next, into the lab, into VR, through VR, out of VR, and out of the lab. From our design elements, we began to craft our research prototype. In order to refine our design, we took a purposive sample of seven digital media students with VR experience. We facilitated a workshop where first they imagined an ideal situation in which to provide transitions in and out of VR, then revised those ideas after a walkthrough of the research prototype. The activity produced several main themes, each of the transitional phases. We further grouped the responses into five different senses, sight, smell, touch, sound, and taste. It was interesting to see a lot of ideas centered around the transition into VR and focused on the sensations of sight, sound, and touch. As designers, we wondered, how could we cover all five transitional stages and perhaps incorporate those senses usually neglected? In our design refinement process, the most creative sounds that emerged were around creating story continuity, syncing virtual and physical sensations, and solidifying the connection to nature. To see if our design set and setting had any effect, we ran a case study with 16 participants who were split into two groups, full transitions experience with our design set and setting, and the VR only experience occurring in a typical lab setting. Here's a video explaining the procedure for the full transitions group. After signing a consent form, the participant's journey begins. A researcher acts as a guide where they take the participant into the space where the immersion is invited to don a costume for their journey. The diffuser fills the room with the smell of a pine forest. The immersion hears crickets and the crackling of a fire in the distance. They take the lantern, to light their way through the dark corridor towards a campfire. Once seated in the camp chair, they find a mug with hot chocolate and a childhood treat. Next to the chair are instructions to choose a talisman spirit animal out of three origami animals, an owl, a frog, or a deer. The immersant shouts out the animal and throws the talisman into the fire. A blue light illuminates, 
Inviting the immersant into the tent, the VR headset is a mask of the talisman. After putting on the headset and headphones, the immersant finds themselves in a tent in a nighttime forest, where they are seeing the awe-inspiring wellness environment, or awe experience. They are led to the climax of the experience, an awe-inspiring scene of earth and sun and space. After the immersant wakes up back in the tent, where it's now daytime, the VR experience ends, and they are welcomed by a morning scene. The immersant sees a journal and paper for drawing a self-portrait, inviting them to reflect on their experience. These tasks give us information on components of the participant's experience, as well as the creative expressiveness and perceived sense of self in the world, both correlates of awe. Once done, the immersant heads back through the corridor to an entrance where the researcher is waiting for them. The participant completes a demographic questionnaire and self-transcendent emotion scale. They reflect on their experience one last time in an interview. At the end, the researcher accidentally drops pens on the immersant, bends down to pick them up, a task related to pro-sociality. Our results from the Transcendent Emotions Questionnaire suggest a general trend that participants in the full transitions condition experience greater feelings of awe, humility, and curiosity, as well as less fear than the VR-only condition. In the small self-drawing task, those in the full transitions condition drew themselves smaller and their overall creativity was rated higher than those in the VR-only condition. This suggests that the set and setting supported the experience of awe. In the pen drop task, those in the full transitions condition picked up more pens in a shorter amount of time compared to the VR only condition, suggesting set and setting supported prosocial behavior. We found five major themes in our data. Childlike wonder, participants experienced curiosity, exploration, and play. Perceived agency, participants did not like the gradual loss of movement and interaction, feeling bored and frustrated. Emotional and perceptual shifts, participants felt more calm, like they were on a spiritual journey and awe at seeing the earth. Transitions, participants felt an openness and readiness for the virtual experience, appreciated how there was a connection between the different parts. Throughout the experience from entrance to exit, and they had space to reflect and accommodate their experience. And multi-sensory components, participants liked the sights, smells, warmth, general aesthetic because it was warm and welcoming. There wasn't that stark, harsh contrast when coming out of the virtual reality. The following are a few representative quotes from the interviews we feel capture the overall experience. A lot of VR experience you get to do, you get shut up the door as soon as you take the headset off. So it's nice when there's somewhere you can either reflect on your thoughts, just kind of compounds the immersion you just felt. I think having the piece of choosing the talisman was great for both engaging, feeling part of the story, or what was happening, as well as a little bit of exertion of will, and the meaning that I could put into choosing the frog. Lighting, different kinds of contextual environmental sound, a little bit of projection, the whole experience would have been completely different, and I think way less interesting if it wasn't for that container. Based on the analysis of our results, we offer three design considerations for supporting profound emotional experiences in VR. First, foreshadow the in-VR experience so that participants can anticipate what's to come and prepare themselves. Second, give participants a sense of agency and control in preparing for the VR experience and ensure the level of agency pervades throughout the entire experience. Third, incorporating some artistic material can help the participant engage more with the experience and accommodate any potential profound emotional experience. Although we've offered these tentative design considerations, it's important to keep in mind that we only examined one specific instance, and we must be cautious in generalizing to other projects. That said, our results are supported by years of industry using exhibits around the digital experience to enhance the emotional quality. Still, there's still many unanswered questions. For instance, what are the minimal conditions? How do our results generalize to different virtual environments? In conclusion, our study creatively explored and developed experiences around both entering and exiting VR with gradual transitions. From our case study results and design process, we suggest three design considerations that will help the participants surrender to the experience. These virtual experiences may allow us to make more profound emotional experiences accessible, ultimately improving the human condition and our overall well-being. If you have any questions or would like to know more, please feel free to email us. You can also find our video of our project on YouTube. Thank you for your time and we hope to see you all in person next year.